The start of 2024 was a rough start for the emulation and retro handheld community. It started out with Yuzu, a very popular Switch emulator, being sued by Nintendo, shutting them down. Then, soon after that, Citra, a really popular 3DS emulator, closed their doors. And then even soon after that, it was Aether SX2, a popular PS2 emulator, they also closed down. There was a PlayStation emulator, I believe, around that time that also shut down. And then there's the whole team working on Jealous decided to not work on Jealous anymore, which is an operating system that a lot of pow devices use. Anyway, rough start to 2024 for emulation, as well as the retro handheld community. Now, I'm not saying that this is all due to the fact that Nintendo sued Yuzu, but it seems kind of interesting that this all happened at the same time, and it's almost like this lawsuit just caused a ripple effect of fear among these developers and programmers and whatnot for these emulators as well as the operating system. You know, it was only natural to feel that emulation was slowly getting destroyed by the big guys. But that is until recently. When something drastic changed in the emulation community that honestly I as well as a lot of other people were very shocked by. And the news we got is that emulation on the iPhone is officially a thing. And not the sketchy jailbreaking your iPhone or complicated side-loading methods of getting emulation. I'm talking about official Apple sanctioned emulation through the App Store. I can't stress enough how monumental this is. For the last like 10 to 15 years, Apple condemned emulation on any of its devices. And now it's at literally everyone's fingertips. I cannot stress enough like how hopeful I am about the future for emulation, especially with Apple devices. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Delta app, which is an emulation app that's been around for a while, but now you can use it on your iPhone. And it's honestly an insanely easy way to get emulation set up. I was actually surprised by how easy this process was. So if you're a newbie to emulation and you just want to get some games on your iPhone, this is really the way to go. And you can play split screen multiplayer as well, which is something I'll get into later in this video as well. Anyway, stick around, watch this video. I think you're going to learn a lot. Here's my iPhone 14 Pro Max. It's my everyday cell phone. It goes everywhere with me and it has a little crack here that you can see on the screen protector. Good thing it does have a screen protector because this phone goes through a beating sometimes. It's funny, I treat my Miu Mini Plus that cost me around 60 to 70 bucks like a little baby, but I'll throw my $900 iPhone around like a sack of potatoes. First thing we're gonna do is download the Delta Game Emulator from the App Store. If you look at the description, you'll see that the app supports NES, SNES, N64, GB and GBC, and Game Boy Advance, and Nintendo DS, and even plenty more to come, according to them. You'll also note here that they pretty much accept any controller that connects via Bluetooth. More on that later in this video. After you download Delta, you'll have an emulator on your iPhone that is ready to play your games, or ROMs if you will. Now, if you're curious about where to get these ROMs slash games, I won't go over that in this video. It's a gray area in terms of legality. Really, you should own all the games you play on this emulator. If you want to learn more, just Google it. There's answers everywhere and plenty of Reddit threads to help you. So how do you get your game files onto your Delta emulator? Well, it's super simple. First, you'll need to actually get these ROMs on your phone. I'd recommend that you go to your files, click the browse option here, and go to on my iPhone, click on the three dots here and create a folder called something like games. You can also create subfolders for each console like I did here, but honestly, that's not necessary. Delta will organize all your games for you. Now, let's say all your ROMs are on your PC or your Mac. You could just copy them over via AirDrop to your phone, but personally, I found it simplest to just upload my game files to my Google Drive and just download them from there onto my iPhone whenever I need them. But hey, it's an iPhone. We all know how to get files on iPhones. You don't need me to tell you how to do it. Heck, you could just email them to yourselves. I know we've all done that before. Next, you'll go into your Delta app, hit the plus button and select all your ROMs and hit open. And that's it. All the files will be sorted into the right consoles and you can start playing on them right away. One quick caveat I'll make has to do with DS emulation. Delta requires that you have BIOS files in order to run DS games. See, when you click a DS game to play it, it prompts you to import the BIOS files. The weird thing is that it won't let you import them if you enter this menu from that prompt you saw a second ago. Instead, you need to hit the gear icon here Head down to Core Settings and Nintendo DS, then you'll be able to add those BIOS files. Weird little bug that I'm sure you should be aware of. 
If you're wondering what BIOS files are or where to get them, I can't really tell you on this channel, but a quick Google search and you'll find what you're looking for. Delta also tells you which BIOS files you need exactly, so that actually makes your search even faster. Before we get into the games, let me talk about some of the features. If you long press a game, you'll get a couple settings you can change. You can rename the ROM, change the artwork if it didn't really match up or you just wanted to use something custom. You can also change the controller skin, which we'll get into in a second. And then you can import and export saves if you wanna like switch to your friend's iPhone or import someone else's save. If we hit the gear icon settings menu, you'll see right off the bat you can change your controllers. This is useful if you have some gaming controllers and needed to switch inputs around because one of your friends has to be player one all the time. Next, we have the skins. There are so many to choose from and I love the customizability. Just Google Delta skins and there's a couple sites that have skins like this deltaskins.github and this skins for Delta. Download these skins to your phone, go back to Delta, for the console you want to change, select portrait or landscape, hit the little plus button, and now you'll have your own new customized skin. If you're like me and you want specific skins for specific games, then all you need to do is go to the specific game, long press it, hit change controller skin, and you can override the default one. Isn't this Link's Awakening skin dope? There are a couple other options you may want to consider, like Respect Silent Mode, where the device won't play sound if your iPhone is silenced, Haptic Feedback, Delta Sync, which lets you sync all your saves and stuff between multiple devices, and Home Screen Shortcuts, which lets you go into specific games straight from your iPhone's main menu by long pressing the Delta app. It's set to the most recent games by default, but you can set your favorite ones if you want. All right, so there's a couple things I wanna point out when playing games, a couple settings. If you hit the main menu button here, you'll see that you have the option to hit save states, load states, cheat codes, fast forward, and hold buttons. And you also have the option to go to your main menu, and then of course resume. Oftentimes you probably wanna do the fast forward option for these long cutscenes like in Pokemon games. You also have this option to select buttons to hold down. So in a game where you want to keep one button pressed at all times, like maybe like a sprint option, you select the button and then press the menu when you're finished and it'll hold that. Creating save states is super easy. Same with loading them. So far, everything you can do with a Delta emulator on your iPhone is pretty freaking cool. And honestly, at this point, I'd be happy with it. But we can take our iPhones a little bit further in terms of emulation. I'm talking about turning your little iPhone into a full-fledged gaming machine, something that you can connect controllers to and play in the big screen. Whether that's you wanna play Mario Kart with your friends, or you just wanna play Pokemon Blue on a 65 inch flat screen. And the process is super simple that even your grandma can do it. I mentioned earlier that the Delta app supports pretty much every major Bluetooth-based controller out there, like your Xbox Series or PS5 controllers. First, you're gonna wanna connect your controller or multiple controllers to your iPhone. Do this by connecting them like any other Bluetooth device. Put your controller into pairing mode, which for the PS5 is the PS5 button and the share button, and for the Xbox, it's the middle button and the little button on top. You'll see them appear as discoverable Bluetooth devices. Once connected, just open up the Delta app and you can literally just open up a multiplayer game and the app will know that there is more than one controller connected. And you'll see right away that you can start playing two, three, or four players on your classic N64 games. If you don't like how it allocated the players, just go back to the settings menu and reallocate the controllers yourself. Now, you're not going to want to play your games hunched over on a little tiny iPhone. Instead, turn on your TV, Go to your iPhone's drop-down menu and hit the screen mirror option and mirror the screen to your TV and Delta will recognize it as a second screen. Now you can play multiplayer games with your friends or spouse or whatever on the big screen. Granted, you will need a TV that supports connecting your iPhone via mirror mode, but most modern TVs will. It's important to note that if you are playing multiplayer games through your iPhone through AirPlay, or screen sharing that there is going to be a very slight delay in your input it's a little bit annoying it doesn't make the game unplayable but it's certainly noticeable 
To get rid of this, you may consider purchasing some sort of adapter that can connect your iPhone directly to the HDMI. This will limit that lag. I have not done this at this time. If you're interested in seeing it, leave a comment below, let me know, and then maybe I'll post a video about it in the future. For the retro gaming niche, having an emulation app on your iPhone that you can download without having to do any complicated side loading or anything like that is revolutionary. It has a simple setup process and you can just whip the device out and literally play wherever you want. And honestly, it feels kind of awkward when you pull a full-fledged retro gaming device out of your pocket in public when you want to play a retro game. But when you're just pulling out your iPhone, it's not really that big of a deal, especially since to everybody else, you're going to look like you're just using your phone like everybody else. Anyway, I was a little bit concerned about the touchscreen buttons, thinking that this would annoy me. But after using them for a while and then also getting to download all those really cool skins, I actually didn't mind anymore. In fact, I kind of enjoy it. And you know, I could always put a backbone on my device so that I can use physical controls. But to me, that kind of defeats the purpose a little bit since I'm just looking for a device that's very pocketable that I can kind of pull out wherever and just game in public. I'm excited about the future for retro gaming emulation. It's only been a week and we already have a great option for the iPhone. I suspect that we're gonna get more emulators soon with more options and more consoles that we can emulate. Anyway, that's it for this video. As more news comes out about this topic in particular, I'll make sure to put more videos out or at least posts out there to keep you guys updated. But for now, just enjoy gaming on the iPhone. I'm gonna do the same and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. For beers. I like beer. I do like beer. Beer's good.